After three and a half years of doing YouTube, 188 videos uploaded at the time of making this video, and 2.5 million views, I have figured out the most streamlined process for producing these YouTube videos. In this video, I wanna break down my entire YouTube workflow from start to finish, from planning to editing, and all the software that I use in the process as well as the team members that I have in place in order to streamline this and reduce the time that it takes me personally to maintain this YouTube channel without burning myself out. I'm Amanda Horvath and I help eliminate the obstacles to getting you sitting where I'm sitting right now, in front of the camera sharing your message with the world. So if you're ready to use video in your strategy this year, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. And for the fastest track to get you up and running with video, be sure to check out the very helpful resources linked in the description below. One of the reasons that I'm shooting this video is because the people in my life at this stage are starting to see the power that has come from me having this YouTube channel and they're thinking about filming their own or making their own YouTube channel, but they're also intimidated by the process because they saw me go from zero to where I am today and the amount of work that has gone into it. And what I always tell them is, look, this is literally what I do. Like, I make it easier for you. I went through the struggles and figured it out and created a roadmap to getting you up and running quickly in a way that all you have to do is literally think about what you're saying, sit down and film the videos, and the rest is taken care of from editing to the upload process and all that jazz. And that's because that's what I teach in my online course, Launch With Video. So if you're interested in that, then once again, be sure to check that out in the description below. But in this video, I wanna really show you the reality of what it takes to do the YouTube channel to where I have weekly videos, but I am truly the visionary, the business owner, the face filming the videos, and everything else is taken care of. So let's dive into it. Step one. Plan your videos. As the business owner, as the thought leader within your industry, you have to plan your videos. This is not one part that you can outsource because then your content isn't going to resonate. You have a pulse on your business and so this is the part that I still do on my own and there are three different ways that I go about how I determine which videos I'm going to film next and how I go about the planning process. The first way that I approach this is to think about this concept that comes from Amy Porter field, which if you watch this YouTube channel, you're aware, I'm a big fan. She talks about this concept of the invisible bridge. Your audience is where they are right now, but they need to be over here in order to buy your products and services, in order to be ready to buy your products and services. So you have to take them across this invisible bridge so that they can be ready for it. So I like to sometimes think about, okay, what am I saying? Where are people struggling? And what kind of videos can I create to help move someone along that invisible bridge to be more ready to buy my products and services? So this is the first way that I come up with content ideas. The second way that I come up with content ideas is to think through it from an affiliate revenue standpoint. So if there is any sort of software, gear, or anything that I can review or recommend on the channel that would increase the likelihood of someone going to the description below and clicking on that link to where I would make passive income in the background, then the, this is another way that I kind of think about how to plan out my videos. So the first approach is all about increasing the amount of course sales that I would make essentially, or coaching services or anything like that that you might do within your business, uh, just regular services. Then the second way is increasing that affiliate revenue. So each one of those has a goal. The third way that I come up with videos is to literally steal ideas from other people that have similar YouTube channels to me. So as you start creating content, you're going to find who these people are. Your audience will often comment about these individuals and just in doing keyword research, which is a big part of the process, I will link to a video in the cards on how to do keyword research as well as in the description below so that you can check that out if you're unaware. But I essentially just go and find these people's YouTube channels and I look at videos that they've created in the past and I literally screenshot them on my phone and I will pull up my phone, show you a recording of my recent doing this process. 
So here I am in the Photos app of my phone, and you can see I have several screenshots from other creators with a video just circled of what I could potentially create. So I can flip through these. You can see right here on the screen, this is actually the one that I'm filming right now. Uh, so that's where I got the idea for this video. We got Vanessa Lau, we've got Think Media. They're a similar channel to me. We've got Justin Brown. We've even got some content bug in here as well, Catherine Manning, um, for different video ideas. So that is how I take ideas from other creators very quickly to get inspiration for what to film next. Once I've done that, then I hop into Trello where I'm actually going to organize all my ideas and start planning my scripts. So now we're gonna hop on to my Trello board. You can see I have this shoot next column and I have all the videos laid out of what I want to film. Now within each video, I might have a loose outline of what I wanna cover in that video or in some scenarios, I might have a full on script written out once again, it depends on the video topic and how much time I have to prepare for that video. So sometimes I fully script, sometimes I outline. And I have another video on that if you are trying to decide which one to do and whether or not you wanna use a teleprompter or just wing it on camera, I will link to that in the cards as well as in the description below. But this is the step one process of planning my YouTube videos. Part two, batch record. All right, so here I am. You can see the behind the scenes. I have, the behind the scenes of the room is never as clean as it looks. So I'm sitting there, I'm being incredibly lazy today. I'm only using one light source instead of the two that I typically use. Although for the next video, I'll probably switch it up because it is getting a little bit darker as the sun goes down. I have several clothes here. I like to change with every video that I film. And I also have my makeup here for some quick touch-ups between videos if I want to switch that up as well as the hair looks as well as jewelry that I can change with each video so that each video looks slightly different. And that is a great way to ensure that your videos stay interesting and you're not just wearing the same thing in every single one, which makes it really boring when someone is clicking and watching your YouTube videos. And since we took a second to show you the behind the scenes, why not grab another light because it is getting dark and uh, lighten this up a bit. This is how simple it is to switch things up. I plop this light down here. I'm gonna throw some batteries in this bad boy, set that light up and we'll keep filming. Hey, before I move on to the next step, I would love to know your experience of batch recording content and what obstacles you might be currently facing in making that happen. Drop your comments below and I'll be sure to hit you back with an answer. And while you're at it, be sure to click like because it really helps me out. Step three, organize files. Depending on how long it takes me to record videos and how much energy I have at the end of the day, I either drop the footage that same day onto my computer, so I use card readers to take the audio files, the video files, organize any screen recordings that I did or any screen recordings on my phone as well, any B-roll that I took, anything like that. I get it all into one project file on an external hard drive so that everything is in one place and I don't misplace it. This is absolutely key to the process because if you wait too many days, then you might forget how you went about filming the videos and you might forget that you had certain B-roll that you shot on your different devices like your phone or on your computer or anything like that. So ensuring that you don't wait too long to drop the footage is absolutely key. Now in terms of what hard drives I use, I will link to my favorite one in the description below. I have one that I use per year and then I also have a backup that I'll occasionally go through and make sure that all of my files are copied to another one just in case anything happens to this because that would suck if so. Step four, set up project file. Now this is a step that I personally choose to do. I find that it saves my outsourcers a lot of time if I go through and do this step versus having them do it, but you could potentially just pass this part off as well. So what I like to do is set up the Premiere project file for my editor. That way I know it's gonna be organized 
with all the files that they need. I can set up any sequences that they need as well and have a very clear way of saying, hey, here's video one plus all the files for that, video two, all of the things. And then they can just pick up and start the editing process rather than having to go back and forth and say, hey, where was this file or anything like that. So once I've dropped the footage, what I'm going to do is then take all of the files, the video and audio files that I typically record separately, throw them into a program called Pluralize, which is going to sync everything up really nicely. I'll export an XML file from that, put it into Premiere Pro, and then I'm going to set up all those sequences that I just mentioned to ensure that all of the files that the outsourcer needs are in one easy to find place. And one advanced step that I sometimes do is create proxies. So if I have a ton of footage that I'm trying to send over the internet, then I might want to create proxies, which are smaller versions of the files that I just shot. And I will do this in the time that I am setting up the Premiere project file so that I can send the outsourcer the proxies instead of the full 4K resolution files. Once again, I'm going high level when it comes to all of this stuff. If you wanna learn the step-by-step -step process, it's really not as complicated as it seems. Once you know how to do this stuff, all you've done at this point is plan your videos, batch record your videos, and set up the project file, and then everything else will be passed off. So you can do this in in one full day of filming plus a half day of actually getting it out. And you only have to do that once per month in order to stay consistent. Chiming in here real quick while editing this video, if you would like to learn this entire process that I'm talking about in this video from batch recording all the way to getting your project file set up and over to an outsourcer, then I invite you to join me in Launch With Video. This is my online program where you not only get access to all of the training videos for how to do this, it's literally the closest thing to me being in the same room with you, showing you how to set up your gear, how to set up your project files, all those things, <laughs> to also being able to hop on a Zoom call with me every single month where we're going to troubleshoot any problems that you have in terms of content strategy, tech issues, and anything like that. So it's a really awesome program. I will be sure to link to the sales page for you to be able to join in the description below. Now back to the video. Step five, send files. The next step is to outsource all of the editing. And in order to do that, I need to send the files to the outsourcer that I'm going to be working with. Now I use Google Drive for this at this moment. In the past, I've used Dropbox, I've used Frame.io, and I am honestly switching them up kind of consistently and testing out different things depending on the different use cases that I have. So whatever file transfer website you need, you can use. So let me show you how I do this within my Google Drive. So here I am in my Google Drive and I have a folder that's just a media folder. The reason I have all of the files in a media folder is because if at any point in time my Google Drive gets filled up, then I go through and I delete anything on there that is taking up too much space. So I do not store my video files on Google Drive. It's purely a way to get the files to the outsourcers. So then I find the outsourcer that I'm working with and I upload the video files in a Premiere project file. So I put the Premiere project file there. They will put any back once they make any changes to it, as well as any footage, both A-roll and B-roll, audio, video, and screen recordings that I might have. Now remember, they don't have to worry about what all of these files are and which file goes to what and be all confused about it because I've already set up the Premiere project file for them. So they download the files, connect all of the media and everything is nice and organized within that Premiere project file. If you happen to be watching this video and you already know how to batch record and do all that stuff, but when it comes to actually outsourcing, that's where you struggle, then I highly recommend joining my Outsourcer video editing program that breaks down everything you need to know in terms of how to find and outsource your, or find your editor and actually outsource your videos for $8 an hour. It works like a charm. So I will link to that in the description below as well. Step six, give notes. When it comes to giving notes on the edit, there are many different ways that I've gone about it in the past. 
I have used Frame.io, which is an amazing resource for dropping time-coded comments on videos that make it really easy to communicate your idea to the editor. And so sometimes I do that if I have a lot of videos that I am giving notes on. Or I might just use Telegram and WhatsApp to go back and forth with my editor. I avoid email whenever possible. So I will kind of voice record any notes that I have, or I will actually write out the time code and what I want to change and send any additional files that they might need in order to bring that video to fruition. So if I want to shoot some extra B-roll for it, then I can do that and send them those extra files for them to place in and finalize the video. Now, one of my favorite parts of my entire YouTube workflow process is that if I get a video edit back and it doesn't quite live up to the expectation of what I wanted, then I am not going to waste time going back and forth and trying to communicate my vision to someone. Instead, I'm going to have them send me back their latest Premiere Pro project file. I'm going to plug in my hard drive and reconnect all of the files, plus any that they might have added on their end, and pick up where that editor left off. This is one of the most powerful parts of my YouTube workflow and one that I think is absolutely essential when it comes to fast turnaround times and being able to release videos that have your genuine stamp on them. So in this case, I'll go in and make any changes that I want to make and do the final export on my end. Step seven, optimize and upload. Getting a video fully optimized for YouTube is certainly a step that you do not want to skip. If you have put in all this work up until this point to create videos that you are proud of, that share your message with the world, then you need to have it packaged in the right way to where people are actually going to watch that video. This includes creating the thumbnail, putting a title that people will actually want to click on, and ensuring that it gets you ranked on YouTube, as well as tags, optimizing the description, and all that jazz. Luckily, this is a part that you can outsource and I do outsource it. So for years I did this part and this is the part that I think stops a lot of people from producing on YouTube. So what I ended up doing is creating a process document extremely detailed of how I go about the upload process and I pass this part off to other people to do for me. This saves so much time because then once again, I am genuinely the thought leader. I am focused on planning content, batch recording content, and sending files and giving notes to editors. That's the only part of the process I do. Everything beyond that is covered. Step eight, archive project. Now, personally, I'm a type A person and I like to be able to go back to any YouTube videos that I've shot in the past and be able to reutilize that footage, whether that is cutting additional videos out of it or wanting to create a compilation video or whatever else it might be. So before I finalize these videos, I don't just leave files hanging out in the ethos. I like to collect everything and get it on my external hard drive, my personal one, as well as the backup hard drive as well. So I will get the latest Premiere project file, any additional files that that editor might have added to the project, and I can make sure everything connects properly in Premiere Pro, and then voila, I close it, and that project is good to go, archived. I'll be able to go back to it in the future, should I wish to. So now you know my entire YouTube workflow process from A to Z, from start to finish, and what it looks like at this stage. Now, once again, if you would like to learn this process for yourself in a step-by-step -step manner and actually be able to talk with me about the intricacies of each one of these, then I would love to have you in my online community and online course, Launch With Video. So I will link to that in the description below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Be sure to click like, letting me know you like this video and drop your comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.